Hello and welcome back to the start of a, another series on, um, this is, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, this is ODDMP, um, or OrthoDDMP. Um, this is the sort of the, I guess, standard DDMP um, that people have made. Um, and I have made it before, so hopefully this runs a bit smoother then maybe the Parry DDNP will run. Um, this is starting from picric acid. Um, obviously, you do start from aspirin, um, but I have word on the street that, uh, that Doug's lab is going to do an aspirin to uh, picric acid video, so I currently compete with that, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll just uh, start from picric acid. Also, well, no, the main reason is I have picric acid already. I made it like you know, a few months ago. And while I really do love that synth, um, just for time's sake, I'm going to start from there. And there's quite a few good videos on, on aspirin to picric acid already. Um, what I find interesting is, is between the two DDMPs, one you make from aspirin and one you make from paracetamol, um, which is a bit of a coincidence. Well, I, I don't know, not that much of a coincidence because they're both painkillers, so they're both sort of COX-2 blockers, so they're sort of similar molecules in a way because they're targeting the same sort of receptors. Um, but one happens to be, have you know, at different points in the ring activated. So one gives you um, an ortho DDNP and one gives you a para DDNP, which is just describing where the different constituents are. So they're structural isomers. Structural isomers? Yeah, isomers. So, what are we doing in this episode? We are making sodium sulfide, which will be selectively reducing only one of the nitro groups in the picric acid, um, which isn't something that's done that easily um, in terms of reducing agents, meaning we don't really have a, have a great selection of things we can use in quite a lot of reactions. You know, um, you can use any oxidizer you want, and they'll, you know, some will work better than others. But with this one, um, because if you have a too weak a reducer, you're not going to reduce any of the nitro groups, and too strong, um, you're going to reduce two or three. Um, so it's going to be just the right sort of level. Um, and in this case, sodium sulfide seems to be a great, um, great one, great reducer. Um, and quite often, this is this is sort of made by the direct reaction of sodium hydroxide and um, sulfur um, and that makes a sort of blood red polysulfide solution. Um, I honestly haven't tried this method but it seems a little hit and miss so what I usually do is I we're going to make some iron and metal sulfides um, and then use that to generate hydrogen sulfide um, use hydrogen sulfide to react with the um, sodium hydroxide to create sodium sulfide, which should hopefully crystallize out of solution. Um, now, in the past, I have used pure iron um, with well, just just iron in the form of steel wool with sulfur, but that doesn't really work very well, um, mainly just because of the form the um, iron's in doesn't really allow it to burn very well with the sulfur because um, it's just so fluffy. I've also used just aluminium with the sulfur, and uh, yeah, I'm going to show you a clip of that working now. Well, that was unexpectedly violent. <laughs> and obviously, yeah, that I, I didn't recover anything from that, so um, we're using a bit of a mix. We've also got this. The sulfur is still in a granulated form, so um, that should help slow it down a little bit, but the aluminium is very fine powdered, so hopefully we get a sort of a nice speed where everything burns, um, but it doesn't, you know, shoot flames all over my backyard and throw the product everywhere. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, mix this, we'll go find aluminium, uh, I reckon a glass container actually because aluminium will melt and that'll just add extra slag that'll slow the reaction down so I'll go to glass thing, it'll shatter but that's okay, I'll just use a shit glass thing 
Um, and then we'll go light this on fire. Alright, and today's fire is brought to you by the clean, crisp taste of Strongbow Cider. Please sponsor me. Um, yeah, so it, this will probably shatter, but um, I'll stand back and... Um, sorry, this is not a great filming angle. Something. All right, there's the flames. That was okay. I don't think the product splashed everywhere, so that's nice. Um, considerable more flames than I think I was wanted, but um, there was a lot of just genuine fire there. I don't know what's up with that, but. It smells dreadful, of course. Now, I do want crystals of sodium sulfide to come out, um, which isn't, you know, such an easy thing to ask because it does have quite a quite a reasonable solubility in water. It's about 13 grams per 100 mils, even at zero degrees Celsius. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a very, very concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. Um, concentrated in the fact that if this was cooled, this is 30 grams of sodium hydroxide and 25 mils of water and um, if this was cooled down to zero um, the sodium hydroxide would start crystallizing out um, but if we start bubbling it through at room temperature so room temperature is about 35 odd today in the sun oh, the sun's probably warmer than that but um then we should start making the sodium sulfide and then if we start cooling it down um, to zero, you know, halfway through this, um, the bubbling of hydrogen sulfide, we should start getting crystals of sodium sulfide out. Unsurprisingly, the sodium hydroxide is having a pretty hard time getting all dissolved in that amount of solution. It's been probably 20 minutes. I didn't add it all at once, but this is, this is all of it now. Um, I'm amazed at how sort of viscous the solution has gotten. Um, but, and it doesn't, there's not so much of an exotherm now, like, I, I added the last sort of third and it really hasn't warmed up at all. And I guess that's just to do with the slow rate that it's actually dissolving in. And um, I guess once you've already got a sodium hydroxide solution, adding more sodium hydroxide um, isn't so much an ex, as an ex, ex, as exothermic. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I did, add, I did add an extra two drops of water. So it's probably all up probably 26 mils of water in here and this will dissolve um, might even need to actually heat it which is weird I've never had to heat a sodium hydroxide solution to get the sodium hydroxide to dissolve before um, but yeah because it's only it's only going to be soluble when it's hot and there's not enough exotherm to keep it hot now that's um yeah but we're nearly there alrighty this is our slag mixture uh, it's pretty obvious I should have run it on a sort of tile or something like that instead of just the, the um, wood chips in the shed there. But um, what have we got? All right, so this is this black stuff is the stuff we want. Um, that's yeah, that's our iron sulfide. So we can sort of mash this up a bit and um, then put it in this flask here. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, have um, probably 30, 20 percent acid sulfuric acid because uh, it's non-volatile um, and that'll drip down onto the um, sulfides and produce hydrogen sulfide which will bubble through we'll go through the uh, sodium hydroxide solution which isn't in there and then out this tube and through this scrubber which has calcium hypochlorite in it a lot of calcium hypochlorite so um, hopefully nothing escapes um, and I've done this before and it's it's pretty runs pretty smoothly um, you don't really get too much outside like it's not noticeable that you're running a hydrogen sulfide generator unless of course you open one part and then it's then it's very obvious um, hydrogen sulfide as well as being um, very bad to breathe in like as in it's, it's unpleasant is the, the word I was looking for is unpleasant apart from being unpleasant it's also very toxic um, so measures should be in place to um, limit your exposure like should, I should definitely not do this indoors. I'm not indoors. 
that's the sky. Um, got a bit of wind today, so that's good. I'm going to have my gas mask on hand, although I won't really wear it, unless I definitely, if there's a leak in the apparatus and I need to just shatter it off, I'll chuck it on and everything like that. But yes, yeah, you definitely got to have a scrubber, although I'm not sure how much will make it past a certain hydroxide. You can see how it all formed, it's all molten and it's just melted and fused around this glass and stuff. Real interesting, real work of art this. Oh. Yeah, it's black iron sulfide. It's, it's very sort of crystalline, it's quite pretty really. Um, it doesn't smell now, definitely smelled after it. Oh, no, I'm getting the old whiff, of, but it's not too bad because it's all completely dry. Actually, it's really quite pretty, this, this sample. Um, on the inside, it's very metallic looking. Alrighty. Yeah, are you ready? Alright, let's do it. Here we are about 10 minutes later and uh, I've put this in the ice bath and we can see it's absolutely thick with crystals. This is a big sludgy mass. So sludgy in fact I don't think the hydrogen sulfide is pumping through it which is fine by me. There's not much of it left coming over. I mean I've still got some of this but I can box that up and um, use it later so I don't have to run through the whole lining things on fire thing yet. Alright. I get the point. Um, Alright, actually I'm going to yeah, I will deal with this, turn the camera off and deal with it. Yeah, that's all crystals really. Might even add just a tiny bit of amount of water just to wash that out. It's gone orange like you'd expect sort of um, polysulfides formation to do. I guess this method can't even avoid polys polysulfide formation. Um, yeah, alright, I'm going to turn this camera off and clean it up. Alright, um, it was really just too thick this mixture to, to uh, filter, so I had to add some more water, but hopefully that'll have washed out all the sodium hydroxide, and um, hopefully now we can actually filter it. Um, yeah, this looks a lot better. Okay, so while that took forever, um, about 50 minutes or so, um, we are, it did work. And we're left with here some oh, still reasonably wet um, sodium sulfide of uh, 25 grams. Obviously it's still a bit wet, but um, so we're looking at roughly 22 to 20 grams. Hopefully I can maybe try that a bit more somehow. Um, and um, I'm not going to store this, if I, I could store it if it was completely dry, but um, it does decompose releasing hydrogen sulfide um, over time with contact with water, so I can't store it like this wet, but I'm going to use it um, in the picric acid, picric acid reduction either tonight or tomorrow, so that's not an issue, and that should be enough. Alright, so this is some um, sodium sulfide made by the same method about oh, eight months ago. And it's been in the freezer actually, just because I wanted to prevent it from decomposing. And it looks like it's picked up a bit of water that wasn't there originally. But you can see it definitely looks different than this one. That's a sort of nice, clear um, crystal. Um, and that was because I made that one with a lower concentration of sodium hydroxide at the start so it was lower yielding but nicer crystals and I guess in a way that's better I, I don't know why I was so obsessed this time with starting with a very concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide 
um, that made it bad on my glassware, I guess, although I haven't noticed any etching, but you know, still it's not great. Uh, made it, you know, so long on the filtering step. Uh, made life really difficult for really not much better results. So um, keep the solution concentrated, but not n insane concentrated like I did this time. Um, and because I mean, sodium sulfite, I don't wrote it as sulf, sodium sulfide, sorry, I get that wrong. Anyway, sodium sulfide um, does have about the core of the solubility at sodium hydroxide does at zero degrees. So, yeah, don't don't be as nuts as me with this. Um, trying to keep it very concentrated. But yeah, so I'm going to use this up tomorrow. I nearly forgot the most important part, and that's proving what I have is actually what I say it is. Um, all right, so we got a small a lot of the crystals down the bottom there. And we're going to add some water, see if they dissolve. Good starting point. And they do. And you can also see some bubbles coming off them already. Um, and that's it decomposing. Now, I'm going to add some acid to this. And it will generate hydrogen sulfide. And I'll be able to smell that. Um, but, how do you at home know I'm not lying? Well, I have some paper here which has got some lead acetate on it. This is known as lead, you know, this is a good test for hydrogen sulfide because um, it'll, it forms lead sulfide, which is very insoluble and very black. So that will um, form a, you know, turn the paper black when, when I hold it above the hydrogen sulfide coming out. Alrighty, here we go. It's definitely bubbling. Where the clamp is, is very annoying, I know. Alright, then we grab our and look at that. That is a positive for lead for hydrogen sulfide, obviously. So that's great. That's a definitely a. Um, obviously, can't measure the purity of it, but I'm going to assume that most of the sodium hydroxide um, went out in the solution. It's still over here. So, great. Um, and any excess hydroxide won't really make a difference for um, this next step in our DDMP synthesis. So, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.